How's it going everybody? Another day in the power saw shop. Um, been looking at comments, questions um, about Buckins Homelite 850, Pro Mac 850 that I ported. A lot of comments, good suggestions. Thank you to everybody that takes the time to suggest things. I don't know everything friends and uh, a lot of you guys have way more Mac experience than me so um, Please feel free to make suggestions in the comments. Uh, you're not hurting my feelings. If uh, if you notice a problem or something that you think I should have did different, I'm, I'm really happy uh, to entertain ideas always. This is always going to be the channel learning, and a lot of that is me learning. Uh, just because I'm in front of the camera doesn't mean I know everything. And uh, thank you to all the suggestions. Quite a few suggestions about replating this. Um, we might actually do that. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to, there's several places in North America that do it. And, uh, it'd be interesting to have this board plated and sent back with a new piston and then we can put it back together. Um, I would love to port it first, but the problem is friends, um, it's really hard to get a pistons for these max. If I can find one, maybe I'll set it back up i would actually like to modify the timing on this just a hair i think we can get a little more speed out of it and with new plating there'd be no worry about it burning down again so that could be nothing but a good thing um what i did yesterday day before i don't know when you guys are going to see this i boxed up buckins 922 home light and uh, mailed that off to him so happy to get that thing out into the world a lot of time put into that saw and uh, I hope he likes it I've never ported one of those before so that was that was a shot in the dark and I think I succeeded so all the years of porting studying keeping notes are, are definitely working the more saws I port the more data I have in my timing book and uh, the the more I can accurately track where I want to take a saw those saws are really hard, friends. I, a lot of you guys are reaching out to me through email. Um, you want to port those. Those are one of the hardest saws to port because you can't do machine work to them. They will free port horribly if you do. Um, six ports can be hard to keep velocity going through because they have primary, a secondary, and a third boost port at the back. Um, they're kind of overbore, short stroke. Uh, reeds add another layer because often if you port a reed saw you have to retune the reeds and that's more art than science so um, and then carburation issues just all the little things and then those saws run really hot stock when you port them they run hotter so you have to kind of take all that into account um, before you're going to port one of those not to say you can't do it but um, one of the more difficult saws to port just like these things, these these yellow machines uh, can be tricky to port. Getting in there can be tough, and Macs are unlike any other saw I've ported. They don't like the same timing numbers. Just everything about them is different. So I, I also sorry, I'm I'm gathering my thoughts, friends. I'm super fired up today. Uh, it was a good day of painting last night. Uh, I slept in a little bit this morning. And, uh, but I had a good day of rolling ceilings and, uh, it feels good to get stuff done. The other saw I boxed and mailed away, uh, is Adam Winchittle's 268. Uh, the saw that he mailed to us, he bought that saw as a project. It, it was more of a project than he could take on. He sent it to the channel and you guys saw that thing. That thing was mint, like minty, minty. One of the nicest 268s I've ever seen. The fact that I got to play with it makes it, you know, so much cooler. And I thought to myself, well, we're going to give this away and I'm going to send it right back to him. So, um, I couldn't test that saw all winter because of the amount of snow. I couldn't get to any wood. It was too cold, too windy all winter. So, um, unfortunately that saw sat on the shelf until I could properly test it. I won't mail a saw away until I've done work with it. And... The other thing was we used that Titan nickel cylinder, uh, different plating on that. They don't have a huge cross hatch. I wanted to see how that thing was going to break in. 
Um, those cylinders take a little longer to break in. The plating's really hard on them. I think they will last longer, but if you buy one of those, friends, and you're breaking in and run that saw pretty fat for many tanks before you start turning it up. And I think you'll have no trouble there. So, um, Adam, I hope you enjoy that saw, buddy. And thanks for being so patient. I appreciate it. And, uh, friends, we're going to do another giveaway saw. Um, I got so many saws here, friends. I'm looking up. I don't know what I'm going to do. I got all kinds of different saws sitting here and I'll pick one out, out one of these days and we'll do another giveaway saw. I love doing that. You guys have put me in the position that I can just build saws and give them away. That's super, super cool. So I appreciate all the support, help, lots of super thanks coming in lately. Um, that's a new thing that YouTube added on the bottom bar. You can hit super thanks and help support the channel. Uh, guys, that stuff really helps, uh, buy parts and just keep the channel running. So I appreciate all the support. It means a lot. Okay. What I want to do today, I have lots on my mind today, friends, but what I want to do today, Buckins Pro Mac 850 blew up. You guys saw the last video or a lot of you did. If you didn't uh, go back in the channel and check that video out, a lot of good comments and questions. Um, about replating and again I, I think I think we could replate the cylinder no problem it'd be cool to see now I want to address a couple of the comments and then friends let's talk about the spark plug what color it is let's talk about this ding in the top of the piston I had a lot of comments on that but I want to mention something right now friends uh, I got a lot of comments about oil mix ratios and perhaps I should be running more oil in my saws. Now, I've done 32 to 1, I've done 40 to 1, 44 to 1, 45 to 1, 50 to 1. I haven't gone any leaner on the oil than 50 to 1. Um, <clears throat> I run 44 to 1, friends, 45 to 1, sometimes 50 to 1 if it just ends up that way. I use my Opti 2. I have never lost a saw due to a lack of oil at 50 to 1. Never. Um, now I tend to be nice to my saws. I don't wring their neck tuning wise. I run sharp chains. Uh, I don't like running a doll chain. I have, a, <laughs> this is one of my personal things. We all have our things. Um, I have a really hard time with doll chains and I'm just generally nice to my saws. I blow them out when I'm done using them. I keep them clean. I keep them sharp. Um, I'll put a carb kit in when I think it needs one. Um, I, I warm up my saws, so that stuff's really important. Um, I guess maybe if you're harder on saws, if you're honest with yourself and you, you say, yeah, I don't warm my saws up quite enough, I run doll chains, maybe you should run a little bit more oil. I don't think that hurts anything, but I'm not of the mind that that helps anything because I'm constantly pulling my own saws down that I run 45 to 1 in and... They're oily in the bottom end. Lots of oil in the bearings. Uh, no carbon. I don't see any carbon. So one of these days, friends, I'm going to take the top end off of one of my running saws and show you, you know, two, three, four years of running in a saw that burns Opti 2 at 45 to 1. And we can look at how oily it is, how much carbon, and just the wear and tear on it. So I don't think this is an oiling issue, friends. I don't think putting more oil would have saved this saw. Um, Buckin runs 45 to 1, I believe, and I think he runs Castrol. He doesn't blow saws up, friends. Uh, he's, you know, he spent more time starting saws than I've spent running saws, and that's the truth. I'm an honest guy. If he was popping saws left, right, and center, uh, we, maybe we would be looking at his oil and, and ratios and what brand he uses, but he doesn't, he doesn't seem to pop saws, so, um, that was a good suggestion, but I, I don't think that's the case here, friends. And one thing I will mention, um, I run Opti 2 in everything. One of the reasons why I run Opti 2 is it stabilizes my fuel. And again, friends, I'm not sponsored by Opti 2 or any of that. That's just an oil that I run. Uh, a buddy of mine who was a Husqvarna mechanic for many years, uh, a lot of the Husky dealers around here run or sell Opti2 oil. He's been using it for 25 or 30 years and he swears by it. I switched to it and I feel the same way. It stabilizes, friends. This 
394. The fuel in here is probably a year old. And uh, I run Opti 2 for this reason. Let's give this thing a little choke. Okay. This thing has old oil in it. Look. Okay. Or old fuel. Now that's not the only oil I'd tell you to run, but there's a lot of quality oils. Friends, the old saws that I get this all the time, 20 to 1, 16 to 1, 24 to 1. Uh, like for instance, this saw here, which we are going to jump back into one day. I kind of hit a stalemate with this saw and I never jumped back into it. I can't remember, this saw had a sticker on it. This saw is like 20 to 1 or 16 to 1. Friends, you got to remember something. When these saws came out, they were running like 30 weight motor oil or 10 weight, something like that, in the gas. They didn't have two stroke oil, okay? They were mixing it at like 16 to 1. That stuff would separate from the gas. It was super smoky and oily. It was hard on stuff, okay? As two strokes became a thing, they started selling two stroke oil, but the oils that they sold were not as good as what we have today. Okay, oil technology has come a long way. Um, look at, I mean, my truck, my Tundra, uh, 10,000 kilometer oil change intervals on that or something like that. It, it's, it's ridiculous. Years ago, uh, you were dropping oil, that's about 6,000 miles, friends. Years ago, you were dropping oil 3,000 miles, 2,000 miles. Um, I used to pull wrenches for a living, and even in the time I've been around, oil's gotten better. Um, these new oils, Opti 2, they say 100 to 1. Ugh. I'm kind of scared to try it, so even I'm kind of old-fashioned. But um, these these old saws ran motor oil. I want to run this thing so bad, friends. Okay, so... Don't be afraid to run 45, 50 to 1 in your saw. Keep it sharp, run it, you know, warm it up, and take good care of your saws. Blow them off. You won't blow up saws from 45 or 50 to 1, I don't think. And again, that's just my opinion. You know what they say about opinions. Take it with a grain of salt, friends. Everything I say on this channel is just one man opinions or one man's opinion. I don't think my opinion is any more valid than anybody else, but... I'm always building saws, working on saws, taking them apart. I'm only telling you what I see. Um, the worst thing I see that kills saws, guys run cheap oil. They don't warm their saw up. They start it cold and they cut with it for two minutes, cut a couple branches and then shut it down. What that does is pack the cylinder full of carbon. The saw eventually gets scored, blows up, and then it ends up here in my bone pile. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to bring you guys in close. Let's look at the spark plug. Uh, I had a lot of good comments about what color is the spark plug. That saw sure sounded lean in the video. Now, friends, when you pipe saws, and I've been caught doing this, um, pipe saws are harder to tune. They sound leaner than they actually are. And by the time you get that really raspy four stroke, the saw is almost spitting fuel out of the pipe. Um, a pipe saw is really hard to tune. So again, if you're if you're interested in this stuff and you start piping your saws, make sure you're really good with a screwdriver. Or or often your saw is going to be pig rich. You'll be fouling plugs and stuff like that. So um, I think this saw randomly went lean. Because again, friends, pipe saws, it's harder to hear. They're super loud and the four stroke isn't as apparent when you get the saw tuned just right. And then you pour the saw and it's running at really high RPM. The hardest saws to tune are saws that are pulling RPM. Um, even a McCullough, this thing's not pulling crazy RPM, but you, you guys understand what I'm saying? Pipe saws are harder to hear the four stroke. Let's have a look at the spark plug. And I also, the mark on top of the piston, let's talk about that. Did the spark plug hit the top of the piston? I didn't even think of that, friends. 
let's have a look at it together. You guys mentioned it in the comments, and often you guys are right. Did the spark plug hit the piston? I don't think it did because this cylinder is not decked. Uh, I have decked McCullough cylinders. The cylinder's not decked. Uh, the squish on this thing is like thirty thousandths. I don't think that. I don't think any of this stuff will stretch enough to overcome that. And this has a super super domed combustion chamber. But let's have a look, anyways. Maybe this piston hit. The spark plug. Let's have a look at that, friends. I love when I put out a video and there's tons of comments, questions, suggestions. Uh, I like sparking up a good conversation. And, you know, you guys, uh, you guys brought a lot of interesting things. Like, couldn't you bore and plate that? Yeah, you could. And if, if, uh, if time allows, uh, I'm going to reach out to a couple of these places and see about getting this board and plated and then we can put a new piston in it and have a brand new top end basically so that's a great suggestion but you guys were asking about the spark plug she's nice and brown okay now this was rolling around in a bag with other parts that were dirty buck and took this apart bagged everything for me and sent it back so okay Look at the color. That's not even remotely lean. In fact, I would call this a rich plug. Look, she's a little rich. Okay. This plug, uh, this plug ran the best out of, I tried different heat ranges. I will do that in my ported saw, especially the old ones. Okay. So she's chocolate brown, slightly rich. So this thing was rich when it was shut down. Okay, so it's not that. I don't always go by plug readings, but I, I look at my plugs quite a bit just to see. This thing was rich, I would say, not lean. Okay, you guys can see. That's rich. Okay. So it's not that. Now, let's take... There we go. I like the way he took this apart. Bucken has his own way of doing things, and they're ingenious. Like, uh, taking it apart like that and not disturbing all this, I would have taken all this apart. I'm an overtaker aparter. Okay, let's put this spark plug in here. We'll just finger tight it. We, I don't think we need to, like, reef it down because it's seated. I do have vice grips for fingers being a tin basher. Okay. Let's put the light on here, friends. Let's see if you guys can see that. There we go. Notice, notice the combustion chamber, the shape of it. Okay. Now this, this plug sits way up there. Okay. Way up there. I don't know if we can measure it with this. Let's zero this. Let's see how much the spark plug protrudes. I need new batteries in this thing. We're not, we don't want fractions. There we go. Inches. Let's zero this out. Okay, friends. I'm just going to measure. From the tip. Oh. Can you tell I'm not a machinist? Okay. Hundred and sixteen and a half thousandths. So a tenth of an inch above a tenth of an inch above the squish band is how much higher that is. Okay. Now I thought for a second, maybe it did. I actually came out here, friends. I was like, hey, maybe it did. Okay, now if you line this up, look where the spark plug is. The spark plug is on the right side. Okay. Now this is close to the spark plug. But the spark plug center is, here, I'll grab this, right about here. Now, again, friends, all these marks and things, remember, this thing got taken apart and shipped thousands of kilometers, okay? I don't actually think, none of this stuff, this is just from it being loose on here. What we were talking about is this. I'm trying to get you guys right up there. It looks like... It looks like something scratched it off, but it's not actually a ding, okay? 
Like, look, I can't catch my fingernail on there. You don't feel it, you just see it. Okay. Now again, notice the interesting pattern. The spark plug's here and it fires here. Notice half this piston is sooty, which isn't, I, I don't prefer that for horsepower because look, you have one, one set of transfers here and there. So when this fills the cylinder, they go back and they should hit just over top of the intake port here, okay? Here, I'm gonna put this down. Okay, notice the way these go. McCullers are the only saws with swirly cylinders like this. They swirl in and they hit about right up here. Let's see if I can get this to focus, okay? Right up here. And then they swirl back around. Okay, they hit here, they swirl back around. Boom, it fires. But in this case, which another reason that makes these a little different is it fires on one side and not the other, okay? So you get most of your combustion starting here. Where as, and I use this as an example, here's, here's that smoked 440 piston, okay? These fill from the sides here, the spark plug's more in the center and it goes and burns both sides of the charge, okay? And then out the exhaust port. And again, this saw was run, this saw was not warmed up properly. It was super carboned up on the top. Okay, no oil in here. This is just dry, okay, and overheated. Let's have a look at these bearings. Can you guys see? There's oil in there. There we go. Okay, these have oil in them. I can, you guys see that? See, it's glistening on my finger. And again, this road across the country in a box. Here, see the shininess on my finger? That's oil. Let's look at the bottom of the piston. I just, the, the oil debate, and I don't I don't want to have an oil debate because that stuff just goes on all the time. But, okay. See that? There's oil in there. It's wet. See how wet this is around here? That's oil. Okay, all the way around here. And again, I don't know if you guys can see, these are covered in oil. They're wet. Okay, no discoloration of any kind. Underneath the piston is wet. I, I wipe my finger over there. You guys can see I got paint all over my fingers. See, it's kind of wet. Okay, definitely not an oil issue. The spark plug did not hit. What happened, friends? Max are notorious for this. Anything after... Like the Block and Decker era, which I believe this saw is, okay? I And I've read about this. I don't know. I'm not a Mac expert. They changed their plating and kind of cheaped out, and it tends to peel off. This one started at the bottom and went up. That mark, okay, that mark on top of the piston is probably a piece of plating that got on top. But again, I can't feel it, so could just be a scrape from when Bucken took it apart. Okay, and once again, so the pa the plating rolled off. Plating rolled off, got jammed against here. And again, you see nothing on the rings. Okay. These rings are still good. But again, right here, okay. The plating rolled off. It got stuck in between here. As it was going up and down, hundreds of times a second, this goes up and down. It filed a groove into the piston. Okay. There's a little chunk of something in there. See that? That's probably a piece of plating. Okay, and that's what happens. And it, it does happen from time to time. Modern saws tend to not flake the plating. It'll just wear through. But the older ones, this is chrome. This isn't Nicosil. The chrome will flake off and... Okay, friends. So, that's what happened. Well, in my opinion, we don't know, right? But we all we can do is sleuth our way through these things. Okay, I hope that helped shed some light on what I think happened. I'm I'm 99.999% sure that that's what happened. The plating came off. Macs are notorious. This era of Mac are notorious for shedding plating. Unfortunately, that's just something they do. They can do it stock. They can do it ported. Porting it probably doesn't help. But uh, this thing eventually would have just taken the plating off. It's, it's what they do. 
Um, but it's funny, I thought, wow, would that be possible for the spark plug to tap? And I came out here and looked. So please feel free to make comments um, if you think it could help the build or help me learn something. I don't know everything, friends, and I'm always learning on this channel, and I'm always learning from you guys. So thanks for being here. Thanks for commenting, and uh, I think we're, we'll wrap this one up. I'm going to carefully package this up. I need a new top end. You guys probably won't see this thing until we figure out what we're going to do with it. Maybe we bore it and replayed it. Um, or maybe we just put another top end on the saw. I'd like to get another 80cc Mac back out into circulation uh, running. I really like doing the vintage saws. And uh, uh, when one fails, I want to get another one back out there just for testing purposes and that. So anyhow, friends, as always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.